2011 in tech offered up its fair share of surprises. Alliances were formed, addictions broken. The role of social media in fueling social unrest kept commentators a Twitter. Even the royal wedding was dubbed 2.0. So what was the most memorable tech story of the year? Here's blogger Robert Scoble. Steve Jobs, by far. Uh, I, I think, you know, 20 years from now, 100 years from now, people will still be talking about Steve Jobs. I, I don't know if they'll remember the iPhone or the iPad, but they'll certainly remember him. Many will surely agree with that sentiment. Apple's visionary co-founder died at the beginning of October following a long battle with pancreatic cancer. Just a couple of months earlier, the company he'd started in a California garage in the mid-70s briefly became the world's most valuable firm by market cap. The example set by the likes of Apple, Google, and Facebook in Silicon Valley helped to inspire one of 2011's notable trends, the European governments lining up to embrace the economic potential of technology ecosystems. And Google executive chairman Eric Schmidt pleased more than Parisians when he said the following at Le Web. One of the most important things I think is that Silicon Valley needs a competitor. So what do we have to look forward to in the year ahead? Serial entrepreneur Sean Parker identifies what he'd most like to see in 2012. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be related to <clears throat> politics and social change. So we're seeing the power of mediums like Twitter and Facebook um, with regard to social change and activism and the Occupy Wall Street movement and, you know, the um, Arab Spring and so forth. What we don't have are good organizing tools so that institutions which have hierarchy, which have management, can actually leverage the power of social media to get things done in a consistent and sustainable way. Parker has a pretty good track record of spotting trends early. So does Tyler Brule, editor-in-chief of Monocle magazine. Parker is an investor in Spotify, which has just launched a radio app. Monocle has just launched an internet-based radio station. You're with the briefing on Monocle 24. I'm Matt Barbet, joined in the studio by Andrew Tug. Radio is interesting because it's light on its feet. Uh, it's, of course, highly mobile. And with so much content available through downloading, Brule believes that there's renewed currency in media that is truly of the moment. When it's, you know, midday in London, we go live with a program. And a commentator, Peter York, who was visiting recently, he said, you know, what's amazing is I think that live is the new black. I agree with him. Scoble says this increased emphasis on real-time communications will also take television in new directions. I think the Olympics are going to be very interesting because I, we're going to have tablets, whether it's a Windows 8 tablet, so Windows 8 is going to be a big deal, or a, a, an iPad or an Amazon tablet, and we're going to be able to Twitter and Facebook with people around the world, so there's a, a social aspect to this mm -hmm. TV thing, and there's going to be a, a directory in front of us that we can change uh, shows or channels or maybe even camera angles just by clicking a button. So whatever the medium, shared experiences continue to be as valuable as ever. Matt Cowan, Reuters.